Hello again. I'm Olli Heimo from the University of Turku. And I'm again presenting here something. This time uh, about uh, gathering of exercise metrics from elderly, how to do it ethically. And we have one case study with this. Uh, so how to activate elderly? Well, there's memory, cognitive skills, physical training. Uh, we're trying uh, uh, to one make them do things, have their uh, memory not slow down, and keep them uh, active by the mind. Then again, muscle balance training, all that uh, for if they have broken themselves or so that they don't deteriorate so quickly. And uh, with the games, uh, some of them are off the shelf, games that are created for just the elderly, but most of them that are used are for wider audience. Yeah, and in general, when you have a wider audience game, let's say Nintendo Wii, it's not created for the elderly, but it's created for everyone, and that it doesn't always support the elderly so good. Uh, you have to uh, use different kind of buttons, and the menus are complex, and uh, for the people that haven't been using uh, video games, it might be very, very hard and uh, to use uh, your thumbs very uh, agilely, it can be hard. So the controllers and buttons are not designed for them. Uh, usually, uh, in research, uh, people use, uh, researchers use uh, their own softwares, but uh, Normally, when, the, uh, when the people are trying to make therapy with this uh, the of the cell, cell uh, games are used more. And for example, Super Mario game has uh, got very, very good uh, results, but so is the Neuro Racer, which is uh, just made for the activation of elderly. Let's see what we have done. We could have a Finnish audio track, but I think Ville is the only one who will understand this, so I will speak it in English. Uh, here's the, in right there was the Jumpatikku, little uh, sensory device, and it has this uh, mobile application which is connected to Bluetooth. There are different kind of um, exercises that you can do with the stick, like uh, waving your hands or rising from the uh, stool or uh, waving your left, uh, legs and uh, it uh, gives you the results and gives you uh, uh, the goals of how much you should do, how many of these exercises you should do. And all these exercises have been designed by medical doctors and physiotherapists. And here's our showing that how it works. Now it calculates and it, it says, do it, do it, work, do it, do it. Uh, now you have done what your people want to do. And some never know. Here again, raising the leg. How many seconds can you keep it there? And um, this kind of exercises uh, done with the, the, the exercise stick uh, according to the medical prof uh, professionals, very, very good and activating. Oh, wrong slides. This is next slide. Yeah. So, um, about advertising and data mining, it's a uh, very, very uh, big business nowadays. Uh, companies try to data mine from the games uh, as much information as they can uh, to get uh, to know how to make better games, how to ma uh, get more money out of the games, and especially free-to-play games uh, rely heavily on the in uh, income. Uh, 
Uh, the game telemetry is only uh, one part of it. The game metrics is uh, uh, formed from game telemetry using aggregation and using all the uh, knowledge we have found from uh, what can you monitor about the game. I will be quick about this because we are running out of time. Uh, about metrics, uh, there's one metric categorization, player metrics, performance metrics, process metrics. Player metrics uh, can be divided in, let's say, six groups, uh, which, uh, well, in essence, uh, the engineers and the uh, gaming scientists have already categorized a lot of metrics to cover the ground. And the idea is, if you use, let's say, your mouse, they can find metrics, how you use it, how you play, what are you looking at your screen with, when your mouse moves, what is interesting for you, how quickly you move it. They can uh, derive a lot of information only about that. So, but uh, the metrics collected from the game depend on the game itself, about the genre, and about uh, what the developers are interested in. Uh, some core metrics, length of the gameplay sessions, etc., etc., uh, can be collected from most, but uh, it depends on what are your inputs and what kind of a game it is. Uh, and the data can reveal changes in physiological and cognitive performance. Let's say you have been using long time uh, a software, a game, and you are starting to use it slower and slower. That tells something about your health. If, you are, uh, if your mouse is starting to wiggle in the screen, only a tiny wiggle, we can say that there is something going on with your health. And what can we find out about it? We can find... Uh, in many games, the video feed is used, like in Xbox, and uh, uh, from that you can take even heart rate out of it. From facial micro movements and gaze tracking, you can see signs of depression. And from the interest, interest and subject based the voluntary and involuntary micro expressions, they tell what they people want to see, what they might want to see. And uh, when you have the timestamps, you can tell, okay, the people are using, this guy is using the, these games or this software this time, so he's home at these times. He might be gone from home at other times. Um, finer movements from limb movements, you can see, for example, you can check out what's the pin number in someone's uh, mobile phone, if you are tracking the movement all the time, like with the wristwatch. And of course, you can find uh, uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's easily without the people knowing that they even might have it, the data miner might know it. So it's kind of an uh, interesting situation. Uh, it can reveal personal information, yes, the pin numbers there. And in the case of Jumpatikku, there is a variety of possibilities in data mining, GPS coordinates, the accelerometer, uh, physical performance. Uh, for instance, Jumpatikku can possibly uh, locate Alzheimer's or Parkinson's and tell uh, that you have, but of course, the EU legislation says that it cannot diagnose it. So, this uh, law, uh, this is not a health uh, software, health, because the legislation re requires so much more testing. But it's possible to find it from the data, nonetheless. And here is Again, how it's used. And the health games, uh, they contain a huge amount of information. And in wrong hands, uh, that could make the subject vulnerable. And to limit that information, there is, you can do firewalls, you can do encryption, and you cannot collect it, which is very good 
thing many places, not collect anything that it's not necessary. Is timestamp necessary? Don't know. Uh, is it necessary uh, to gather how much it's wiggling to see, uh, so that someone can uh, see the diseases? The difficulty with this method is to understand what information is relevant and what is not. And again, uh, who should be told and what? Uh, if the machine says that, okay, you have a possibility for Parkinson's, if it's known from the data, should it be told to people? Would you like to know it before some doctor runs more tests and says that, okay, you have it or you don't have it? Should it only be that, okay, you should visit your doctor, he has the raw data for the doctor to look at? Uh, because, and if the main uh, system can be hacked, and every system can be hacked, uh, to, uh, there is a lot of, of possibilities, like let's say, okay, this person is usually outside at these times, so let's go and do a burglary. Especially with the elderly, because they have a lot of drugs at their houses. So it's kind of uh, important for not to leak this kind of information out. Uh, so, uh, to whom it uh, uh, should be told, should the person having uh, the right for the medical data. They have uh, the doctor person, uh, Dr. Koskinen, to own uh, their personal data. But in the sense that should it be told with, let's say, mobile phone or the system that can easily be penetrated by a relative or a friend. Uh, how many of you use a, a normal password of swipe to open in your mobile phone? Do you? How many of your mother or father uses it? A tad bit more. And uh, when people go older, it's more uh, familiar. Just swipe to open. You can go and grab your mother's phone and check out, okay, what? She has Parkinson's. Not the information you should have. So what should be done? Uh, well, responsible research and innovation, like Bernd Castel Stan et al. Uh, have said that they should be included, the actors and innovators, to help to do the ethical design in this. And the reflexivity through ethics is paramount in this thing. Uh, uh, to ethically analyze the umpatikku, the intent is obviously good. The desired consequences seem valid. And the idea of creating good life and better health for elderly seems indeed virtuous. Yes. But the problems with the whole idea of data gathering with sensors must be kept in mind. Uh, like John Gotteban says, Good people do bad things when they do not think. So when designing these kinds of systems, we must think and keep this, keep this information in mind. Thank you. <laughs>